Hi, I'm George and welcome back to our video Q&A. Before we get started this week, I wanted to say a big hello to our friends in Colombia and especially Jose from the Colombian Commission for Rocketry who sent us this pin. Um, it's a logo from their team. So thanks very much for that. Uh, you guys are doing great work. I'll just put that up here so everyone can see. And um, I'll also include a link in the description below so that you can go and have a look at the work that they're doing. So let's get started with the first question. Hi, my name is Maddie, and I was wondering how to measure how high my water rocket goes. That's a great question, Maddie. There are different ways you can measure altitude, and we're going to have a look at four different techniques. One uses an inclinometer, which is a protractor, and will use some trigonometry. The other way is ground photography, and then aerial photography. And finally, we're going to have a look at some altimeters, which are also designed for the job. So let's get started. Let's have a look at the inclinometer first, and it's basically a protractor with a hanging weight. And the way you use it is you sight along the edge and you watch the rocket go up until it hits apogee, and then you record the angle um, that it says here. Uh, now, this is a perfectly good way of using it. Uh, it's a little bit old school these days. Uh, you can get uh, apps for your smartphone uh, that are basically an inclinometer, and they go down to about 0.1 of a degree. For these tests, we've made this mechanism that mounts both the protractor as well as the smartphone. Uh, it has a sight so that we can sight the rocket as it hits apogee. And there's also a piece of felt uh, and a lock nut so that uh, when we watch the rocket go up and it reaches apogee, we can just let go of the mechanism and uh, read off the readings from both the smartphone and the uh, protractor. So let's see it in action. We've got the whole inclinometer mounted on a tripod, which makes it much easier to use. So now we're tracking the rockets to apogee, and then we can read off the elevation angle. Here we've measured the rocket at 64.1 degrees. Now knowing the distance you are from the launch pad, we can use a little bit of trigonometry to find out the rocket's altitude. When we substitute the numbers into this equation, we get an estimate of 289 feet. That seemed fairly easy, but we'll later find out why in general this technique is not very accurate. This technique uses a fixed camera on the ground that can capture the entire flight. For this experiment, we're using the GoPro, but pretty much any camera will do. The camera also needs to be located a known distance away from the launch pad. In our case, that's 42 and a half meters. You simply tilt the camera up so that both the launch pad is visible as well as the expected maximum altitude. Using a wide angle lens helps this a great deal. Although you can take a still photo when the rocket reaches apogee, recording video of the launch makes the process much easier. Next you need to create a calibration image. Here we've located the camera 1 100th of the distance from a vertical wall and added markings every 1 cm up the wall which represent 1 meter in the real world. With the camera tilted at the same angle we took the calibration image. You can then play the video back and freeze it when the rocket gets to apogee. Then you superimpose the calibration image over the top and you just read off the altitude above the launch pad. For this flight that was 85 meters or 279 feet. Again later you'll see why this technique sometimes may also not be very accurate. Aerial photography is very similar but rather than the camera being on the ground it's placed on the rocket. In order to get an estimate of altitude you need to be able to film something of a known size on the ground. This could be any kind of feature, such as paths, cars, or buildings. For this experiment, we placed a set of markers five meters apart along a string, and then we ran a second string with another set of markers at 90 degrees to the first one. We also placed a couple of cameras on opposite sides of the rocket, one with a wide angle lens and one with a narrower field of view, so we could get a couple of altitude estimates. Once you fly the rocket, you can then choose an image from the video that's closest to Apogee where the feature is still within view of the camera. Just like in ground photography, you need to create a calibration image. And in this case, we place the cameras one meter away from the wall. You then again superimpose the calibration image over the video frame and orient it so that you line up the calibration markings with the known feature size on the ground. To work out the altitude, you just apply a scaling factor to the measured distance like this. For this flight, the altitude estimate turns out to be 136 meters or 446 feet. 
The last technique we'll look at today uses electronic altimeters that are specifically designed for measuring altitude. Although they can range in price from dozens to hundreds of dollars, they are also the most accurate. Some altimeters are sensitive enough that they have one foot resolution, and here you can see the altitude changing as we move the altimeter up and down. They come in a wide range of capabilities, with the cheaper ones typically only recording the peak altitude, while the more expensive ones will record the entire flight, as well as acceleration, speed and temperature for example. We like to use the Altimeter 1 and Altimeter 3 from Jolly Logic because they're easy to use and give pretty consistent readings. To use them, you just need to attach them to your rocket. And here are some examples of how we typically mount them. And sometimes, like in this experiment, we just tape them to the outside of the rocket. Before launch, you just turn them on and they'll automatically detect launch and then start measuring altitude. Two, one, go! When you recover the rocket, you can either read off the altitude directly or download the data to your laptop like with this Edlog altimeter. The altimeter 3 allows you to download the flights to your mobile phone at the launch site which makes it a little bit more convenient. Now for this test, we flew both the Altimeter 1 and Altimeter 3 at the same time, and they gave altitude estimates of 421 and 420 feet. Okay, let's have a look at why the other techniques gave significantly different estimates to what the altimeters measured on the same flight. We know that the altimeters are fairly accurate, so we'll use those as the reference. We can see that the inclinometer gives a value that is considerably lower. If the rocket flew vertically, then we should get a fairly accurate estimate. But in the real world, rockets mostly fly in an arc, and so the apogee point will be some distance away from the vertical above the launch pad. Here you can see that although the angle is correct, the apparent altitude is much lower. If the rocket had flown the other way, then the altitude estimate would have been much higher. One way to reduce this error is to locate the inclinometer further from the launch pad, or use two of them at 90 degrees and average the results. The ground camera estimate also suffers from the same problem that the inclinometer does because the calibration image was taken against a vertical wall. With the onboard camera, you turn the problem around so you have a much smaller angle you're looking at, but you have a resolution problem where each pixel may represent several feet on the ground. Also, if the feature is not directly below the rocket, you're measuring the distance to the feature rather than the distance above the ground. We ran the whole experiment three times, and here are the results. You can see that similar differences occurred on all three flights as the rocket arced over in the same direction due to the prevailing winds. Thanks for watching and if you want to know more details about the advantages and disadvantages of each of these different techniques, please click on the link below. And uh, that's it, we'll see you next time.